Good afternoon, everyone. A great pleasure for me to be here. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, uh, Canon. I say myself, uh, please, Carlo, don't forget, not Toshiba, Canon. <laughs> 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 for kindly inviting me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> To, to 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 present uh, a, 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 a short talk about uh, um, new advancement uh, uh, in the ultrasound evaluation of uh, rotator cuff tendons, and you know at the ECR 2019 we are in an aquarium and you see some uh, fishes at the beginning, but now move we move uh, to humans. And as you know, uh, the rotator cuff uh, is a very complex uh, structure involving four flat tendons, the subscapularis, as you know, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, and the teres minor, visible here on the posterior aspect uh, of the shoulder, uh, plus uh, the um, uh, long head of the biceps. And things seems to be simple, no? Oh, yeah, four tendons plus one, no? Uh, uh, but things are much, much complex, much more complex uh, than expected. This is what we, uh, we uh, uh, is the appearance uh, of the rotator cuff uh, as we can imagine uh, 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 when we perform an ultrasound examination. We have uh, the arrangement of the tendons, uh, uh, the subscapularis, the supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, uh, the fibers of the two tendons, as you well know, uh, uh, in are interwoven and uh, they form uh, a, a continuum here, uh, the calf, no? uh, in which uh, it's not easy to demonstrate uh, how uh, uh, the two tendons merge uh, with each other. Uh, then we have the interval, and the interval is also a very complex uh, area because uh, it's occupied by the uh, long head of the biceps, but uh, you know that at the level of the interval, uh, the long head is stabilized by some ligaments, no? and the coracohumeral and the, uh, the superior glenohumeral ligament, and these ligaments form a sling around the, the biceps here. But nothing more, no? For us, this is the main structure of the cuff, no? At least uh, going to scan the cuff with the ultrasound, and we didn't ask uh, uh, ourselves uh, uh, more in terms of uh, structural anatomy of this area. But uh, this is a very simplified structure. Basically, we have other relevant structure that can be uh, potentially visible with ultrasound. So this is a drawing of the shoulder uh, showing the, uh, the glenoid in the center, the origin of the biceps here. Uh, you see the subscapularis anteriorly, the coracoid, the acromion, the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, uh, teres minor here. Uh, and, uh, 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 and, uh, uh, and this is what we know until now with ultrasound. But uh, there is more because there is the capsule. Are you able to demonstrate the capsule? There are some ligaments. You know, we mentioned the superior glenohumeral, but we also have the middle glenohumeral. We have the inferior glenohumeral, and the inferior glenohumeral is characterized by an anterior and a posterior limb, and then and we have also have a spiral uh, 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 part uh, in on the anterior aspect uh, of the joint. So it's uh, a, a, an anatomically complex uh, this area. We 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 sh uh, we need to realize that. What what we see is not just uh, one tendon, but is the sum of the tendon with the other structures at the same level, uh, uh, um, potentially joint structure, capsular structure reinforced by uh, ligaments, by specific ligaments. And this is more or less the same image, so the sca same drawing uh, uh, as it appears in uh, reality. We see uh, the origin of the long head here. Uh, this is the capsule. Uh, on the undersurface of the two uh, uh, tendons, uh, two external rotators, so the infraspinatus and the 
Teres Minor anteriorly, we can see uh, the uh, position of the subscapularis. We also have uh, the, su the subscapularis recess here, the coracoid, the conjoint tendon of the short head of the biceps and coracobrachialis. But when we look at the capsule, we also see some uh, uh, um, uh, linear structure uh, referred to the, uh, um, to the glenohumeral <laughs> ligament, specifically the inferior glenohumeral ligament. And this is a, 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 a cranial view showing the position of the axillary pouch, the position of the uh, 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 bands of the inferior glenohumeral ligament. And for us, uh, the uh, question is, um, uh, can the glenohumeral capsular complex be distinguished from the overlying tendons? In this field, the introduction of matrix probe technology and of uh, uh, very high frequencies, probes with a frequency band higher than 20 megahertz, can provide new details about the calf. Uh, 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 the capsule is actually visible when we don't have tendons, no? So, you know, when we go to scan uh, the axillary recess, the axillary pouch, and we ask the patient to hyperabduct uh, the arm, uh, this is what we see. Uh, we see the uh, convexity of the humeral head, uh, the uh, articular cartilage, and the uh, uh, bright uh, uh, area you see here is the capsule. Inferiorly, the capsule is visible. And uh, even if it's impossible to have hyperabduction, when you select uh, an anterior approach to, chest to check uh, the capsule, in cases of adhesive capsulitis, you can see some changes of the capsule. So this is a normal capsule on the, um, uh, the um, uh, non-affected side of a patient with adhesive capsulitis. And this is the, the capsule as it appeared uh, uh, at the level of the uh, axillary recess of the joint uh, in the, uh, in, on the affected side. You see a big difference in terms of thickness. And these kind of images may, uh, inc may inc increase your confidence that uh, this condition is present. So uh, they may contribute to, to the diagnosis. Now we, uh, I would like to show uh, the capsule at the level of the axillary uh, pouch. Uh, <coughs> Shirt off. Please lie down. And this is an area uh, where the capsule is actually um, well exposed. We place the probe here. We see the inferior uh, uh, part of the glenoid. So the inferior labrum and the, this uh, 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 whitish line here is the capsular line. So it's, it's really easy to see at that level because we don't have a, 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 a tendon, especially the capsule is not included in the structure of a tendon. But uh, may I have the PowerPoint slide, please? When we scan the subscapularis, for instance, on the anterior aspect of the shoulder, we note something that is not uh, uh, really recognized yet. So uh, um, uh, look at the tendon. This is the subscapularis. This is the myotendinous junction. Uh, so this is the subscapularis muscle. And in a more uh, medial position, you can see the short head of the biceps here. You see the coracobrachialis. More superficially, you see the deltoid here. And this is the humeral head. Look at the tendon of the subscapularis. The tendon of the subscapularis is characterized by a fibrillar area, visible here. And uh, it's, uh, you see that the, the, the upper fibers, the most superficial fibers, are fibrillar. And then you can follow the, 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 this part uh, more medially. And you can realize that these fibers pass on the undersurface of the myotendinous junction. So uh, uh, the uh, myotendinous junction is eccentric in this case. But what is that? Is tendon? No. This is the capsule. 
So what is believed? So when we scan the subscapulary, we believe that all the thickness of the tendon is tendon, <laughs> but it's not true. The tendon is very thin, and the, the structure located here is uh, related to, to the capsule. So it's bilayered. The it, there is a bilayered structure. Uh, with a, fi a superficial fi fibrillar part and a deep non-fibrillar part. No? And uh, this is another image showing the two parts going more medially here. You can understand uh, that uh, there is a cleavage plane. Uh, when you move the shoulder with the slight internal and external rotation, you can also see the two parts as they glide with each other. So they are not stable, they are not intermingled. They are a uh, uh, line, uh, uh, um, uh, one superficial, one deeper, but uh, they are separate structures. So remember this point. Uh, 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 where uh, can we see uh, this bilayered structure in the subscapularis? Not uh, really crane. Uh, when we go to scan the, the uh, most cranial third of the tendon, it looks uh, fibrillar for the most. But when you go down and you scan the uh, middle and inferior third, this image becomes vi uh, nicely visible and uh, uh, reflects the fact that at the level of the uh, inferior part of the subscapularis, uh, the capsule is uh, thicker. So uh, now I would like to, uh, to uh, scan uh, the subscapularis, but before going to scan, remember this position uh, to image the anterior labrum. No? Uh, and uh, to do that, we invite the patient in general to lie down on the bed you know, with the arm abducted, as you can see here. And again, here we can this, uh, see two layers, one superficial and one deep. The superficial layers, uh, 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 it um, continues within the muscle belly, as you know here, and uh, this is the myotendinous junction of the subscapularis. This is the uh, uh, is the subscapularis muscle, but uh, the other layers goes more deeply, and it reaches the anterior. The tip of the anterior labrum. So this is not the tendon. This is the capsule. Okay, because it, 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 there is no connection between this layer and the overlying muscle here. So, uh, do you remember the image of the capsule at the level of the inferior aspect of the shoulder? It's very similar, but in this case, we have the subscapularis covering the area. So, now <coughs> I would like to show uh, the, uh, the subscapularis tendon inviting our uh, model to lie down here, to place the arm in this position. And then we place the probe here. The frequency is now not very high because we decided to select uh, uh, lower frequencies uh, to better demonstrate the deep details. And we see the convexity of the humeral head here. This is the cartilage. This is the anterior labrum, nicely depicted here in this position. And this is the anterior uh, glenoid. No? When we, we go towards the, the lesser tuberosity, so in this area, we realize that the tendon is formed by the tendon. What uh, uh, was believed to be the tendon is characterized by a fibrillar structure located superficially and a non fibrillar, homogeneously hypo, uh, 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 hyper echogenic area visible here. I, when we follow the fibrillar, uh, 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 um, layer uh, more medially within the belly of the subscapularis, we see the myotendinous junction. This is the intramuscular tendon. And you know that uh, the subscapularis is a multipennate structure. So we'll see more than one of these images depending on the level of the probe. But when we refer to the deep layer, we see that it uh, continues down and it attaches to this area in a relationship with the labrum. So now I, I try to, 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 to change the degree of uh, uh, um, uh, abduction. I rotate the shoulder externally and internally, and I see uh, 
this kind of image, and I realize that this cannot be part of the subscapularis. You see? It's located outside the muscle, and it continues uh, uh, with the anterior aspect of the joint. So this is basically capsule, is the anterior capsule of the joint. So uh, <coughs> may I have a sl the slide, please? Uh, OK. So this is what we saw uh, before. This is the anterior labrum, and this is a short axis image. No? Uh, of the uh, uh, subscapularis uh, muscle. And we, you see uh, the uh, multipennate structures with the intramuscular tendons. Uh, you see multiple intramuscular tendons here. And the deep to them, this is the capsular level. So uh, when we refer to a uh, artro MRI, uh, you can realize that what is really uh, the uh, intramuscular uh, uh, part of the, uh, the intramuscular tendon of the subscapularis, uh, uh, they run in the middle of the muscle and far away uh, from uh, the deepest part of it. No? So the, the, when, uh, so the uh, uh, hyperechogenic part doesn't represent an intram the intramuscular tendon of the uh, subscapularis. It reflects uh, the uh, joint capsule. Uh, to be sure, we injected some dye in a cadaver, no? uh, just uh, in the interspace between the two layers. No? And this uh, uh, was the result. You see the subscapularis. The subscapularis was uh, displaced by the anatomist in this image. Uh, uh, deep to this area, we have the, the humeral head. Uh, and uh, you see the multipennate structure. Here, these are the intramuscular tendon of the subscapularis, and uh, uh, this is capsule, no? And the, the, the dye accumulated in between these two structures, so uh, they are really uh, uh, separated, especially not close to the insertion of the subscapularis, but in, in a more uh, medial position. So look at the, this image. This is a nice anatomic image showing the glenoid here. Uh, you see uh, the lesser tuberosity. Uh, you see the long head of the biceps here. Uh, you see the, the transverse humeral ligament stabilizing the biceps. And uh, this should be the uh, origin of the uh, subscapularis, the insertion of the subscapularis. But in here you see this, the same uh, uh, arrangement with one superficial uh, part related to the tendinous layers and a deep part continuing with the glenoid here. And this is the capsular layer. So it's incredible, but true. No, what uh, 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 the eye don't uh, perceive what they are not prepared to see. For for 20 years, I scanned the subscapularis without, uh, without asking myself what is the ten, where is the capsule. No? And now, with the use of these very high-frequency matrix transducers, the difference is very clear. So um, remember, in terms of uh, um, uh, anatomical uh, uh, insertion of the capsule into the humerus, remember that when we refer to the anterior aspect of the humerus, uh, the area we scanned before, uh, we have a, a cartilage-invested part here. Then we have a, a thin uh, areas uh, not covered with cartilage, and, uh, and without any kind of capsular insertion. This is a bare bone, no? And this is the typical location where, where we can identify some erosions in uh, uh, chronic inflammatory disorders. And then uh, the red line you see here represented the, the width of the scapular of the capsular attachment into the humerus, the the uh, the um, uh, width of these attachment uh, varies depending on the level, as you can see here, and is much wider in the areas where there is no overlap with the rotator cuff tendons. So the capsule attaches for a, a longer, uh, uh, for a bigger area 
uh, of the humerus here for a smaller area where uh, we have the subscapularis. These are, are the values indicating the uh, uh, um, areas of uh, capsular attachment, and you realize that at the level of the axillary pouch, uh, the uh, attachment is wider than at the level of the subscapularis. In terms of thickness, uh, there is a nice paper published this year in, in the literature using the micro CT uh, to demonstrate the capsular thickening. So there was uh, uh, the authors dissected the capsule and then uh, tried to, to calculate the thickness of the capsule using the micro CT. And uh, um, if you refer uh, to this piece, of capsule like uh, uh, neck lace no? uh, around the humeral head, uh, you realize that uh, uh, at the upper edge of the subscapularis, uh, the, the thickness is lower. Uh, the lower edge is much, um, uh, it is much more. Uh, it's, uh, there is a big thickness also at the level of the axillary recess, and then moving up from uh, to uh, the posterior aspect of the shoulder, uh, we have a thin capsule at the level of the teres minor, uh, and the capsule tends to thicken uh, at the level of the infraspinatus. So there is a variable appearance of the capsule. This is a patient with a shoulder uh, instability, <laughs> no? Uh, same image. As shown before, uh, the patient has uh, some episode of uh, anterior inferior shoulder dislocation. Look at the capsule. Hmm? So is uh, ultrasound able to distinguish the glenohumeral ligaments uh, from the capsule? The answer is no. Possibly when there is uh, some uh, distension of the joint cavity, you can see some uh, uh, um, focal areas in which the capsule may appear a bit <laughs> thicker. And this may reflect uh, the position of a glenohumeral uh, ligament. But we have to consider uh, the echogenic area we demonstrated before in our model as sum of the capsule reinforced by ligaments. So this is the first concept. Now we move uh, up uh, to Oh, oh, oh no, I use this position to demonstrate the uh, anteri anterior labrum because uh, you can force uh, abduction and uh, you expose much better. So the quality of the image when you use this position is it's higher to demonstrate a deep-seated structure, and especially anteriorly, where you have uh, uh, the uh, anterior labrum. Did you see the anterior? Uh, if we could could you switch to the ultrasound image, please? So this is a nice image, <coughs> no? If you uh, perform the same uh, in in this position, uh, the result you can see, but the result is not as good as uh, uh, when the patient lie down. So this is m uh, my suggestion. Now we go back to the slides, and uh, uh, we move to the area of the supraspinatus. You know? One of the mm, typical questions, the mm, most asked question is, uh, where is the limit of the supraspinatus and infraspinatus? Is there a way to understand uh, the separation plane between supraspinatus and infraspinatus? So you know that the two tendons are uh, interwoven. So part of the fibers of the supraspinatus moves posteriorly and they merge with the fibers of the infraspinatus. Okay? This is known. No? And uh, this is the concept of the cuff. Um, when uh, uh, we uh, place the probe in the long axis of this tendon, in general the tendon is known fibrillar and this uh, is due to the fact that, that the fibers uh, have a, an oblique course. No? Uh, are interwoven, and so uh, in the supraspinatus, uh, the tendon is not as fibrillar as the sub subscapularis or the infraspinatus or other tendons in the body, with the exception of one area uh, the, uh, located anteriorly at the level of the anterior third. We have a, a cylindrical bundle of fibers going parallel with each other. Uh, this uh, cylindrical bundle is located superficially in the tendon, not deeply here, and uh, the characteristics of this bundle is that it feels an, an isotropy. 
because fibers are parallel with each other, no? They are not interwoven. So when we check the supraspinatus and we see this kind of image, uh, uh, we see uh, some fibrillar architecture. And uh, this is called the, the pseudobiceps, because it's very similar to the, to the biceps. The biceps is uh, very close uh, to the anterior third of the supraspinatus, so uh, one has to be careful to avoid any confusion no, in distinguishing these two parts. And uh, these two parts correspond to, the, to what you see on anatomy. No? You see a cel the cylindrical bundle here and then the, uh, the um, flattened tendon of the supraspinatus going, uh, ex expanding uh, also posteriorly uh, to form uh, the calf. In addition, uh, we have the um, coracohumeral ligament. We already discussed the coracohumeral ligament, and we see the ligament as a bridge joining the supraspinatus and the subscapularis, and also inserting at the level of the tuberosities, forming the roof no, of, the, of the long head of the biceps. More distally, we have the uh, um, attachment of the superior glenohumeral ligament to the complex of the coracohumeral ligament, and this link is named the reflection pulley. As you know, the reflection pulley is a structure stabilizing the bicep in its proper location, uh, uh, and, and, and it's, it's very important to give stability uh, to the tendon. <coughs> but difficult, uh, it's not really clear what happens posteriorly. So uh, if this is the position of the long head of the biceps, uh, the coracohumeral ligament covers the biceps, uh, forming the roof at the level of the interval. And then uh, remember that part of the fibers of the coracohumeral continues uh, superficially to merge with, it, with the uh, supraspinatus here. Other fibers pass on the undersurface of the supraspinatus. Uh, they join with the capsule. Uh, uh, and uh, you can see uh, uh, these fibers very nicely, uh, mm, approximately uh, one centimeter uh, 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 medial to the level of the tendon insertion at the level of the rotator cable. No? So when we refer to uh, this area and we continue on our exploration posteriorly, we realize that uh, uh, the tendon of this uh, supraspinatus, the, together with the coracohumeral ligament, and together with the capsule, because the capsule is located here, uh, remember that uh, the biceps is intracapsular in location. So the capsule passes over the biceps here, and then it moves uh, here. It's the deepest structure located uh, 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 on the undersurface of the calf. So capsule, coracohumeral ligament, uh, uh, rotator cable, uh, 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 and the fibers uh, diverging from the infraspinatus form this kind of layer that is located uh, deep uh, to the tendon of the infraspinatus. No? And uh, this kind of structure is named the superior complex. Look at this image. This image is obtained uh, at the level of the junction between uh, supra and infraspinatus. We are scanning not uh, close to the insertion, but uh, at the level of the myotendinous junction. So if this is the supraspinatus muscle, is the myotendinous junction of the supraspinatus, what you see here is in part tendon, supraspinatus tendon. In part, it is uh, the capsule, and in part, it includes the fibers coming from the coracohumeral ligament going posteriorly. So this kind of complex is named superior complex, no? And it includes all of these structures. Then, in a more superficial location, we have the infraspinatus tendon. So this is the structure. We have a, a deep layer, and this is the content of the deep layer. And then two separate, ten, two separate uh, structure, the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus, located superficial to the deep one. The deep one, of course, contains also fibers of the supraspinatus, but uh, is not pure supraspinatus. No? So look at this image, you understand no? that there is a something enfolding uh, uh, on the undersurface of the infraspinatus. This is the infraspinatus tendon. This is not the infraspinatus tendon. This is 
uh, the most posterior part of the superior complex. So uh, uh, this is what happens at the level of the interval. We see the biceps, we see the coracohumeral ligament, and now you can see part of the coracohumeral ligament going to embrace the uh, anterior edge of the supraspinatus. This is the continuity of the coracohumeral ligament uh, passing deeply to form the superior complex. Uh, and uh, this image is commonly known. Uh, in some areas, it becomes fibrillar, and this happens at the level of the rotator cable. The rotator cable is a distant fibrillar structure traveling transversely from the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus. The cable is uh, fibrillar when you place the probe in the short axis of the tendon, and its spatial echotexture uh, make, it, make, it, make it possible to distinguish it from uh, other structures. So you, you know. Uh, the role of the cable is very important for orthopedic surgeons because uh, um, and its integrity in cases of uh, uh, injuries of the rotator calf uh, was associated with uh, uh, the better um, uh, um, with, with the better biomechanical preservation of the calf with a, um, a lower degree of retraction and lower uh, um, pain. So this is the rotator cable continuing posteriorly together with the structure I described in the superior complex. And uh, this is the tendon of the uh, infraspinatus. This is a transverse image uh, uh, of the cable as you can see there. So, but what is uh, now I would like to show <coughs> this area uh, with the high frequency probe. And we have to switch the probe to 24 now because the, the uh, supraspinatus uh, is very superficial, so we can select uh, a higher frequency transducer. Uh, and for us, when we scan uh, the supraspinatus, we use the uh, Middleton position, the modified crash. And we place the probe uh, at the level of the um, uh, uh, of the biceps. No, the biceps is a very important landmark for us. No, uh, the biceps is hyperechogenic uh, and uh, um, is very fibrillar. And uh, this is the proximal part of the uh, biceps at the level of its uh, intraarticular portion. Uh, the biceps is here stabilized by the fibers of the coracohumeral ligament. Uh, this is the sling, the reflection pulley. So the fibers I, I see here uh, are related to the superior glenohumeral ligament joining uh, the coracohumeral ligament. And when I follow the coracohumeral ligament towards the supraspinatus, I see some of the fibers going superficially here. joining the anterior part of the tendon, and uh, other fibers moves, posti moves deeply uh, 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 at the level of the tendon body. So uh, I, I understand that there is a superficial part of the tendon here and a deep part of the tendon. And if I go more proximally, I see that this deep part is no more hypoechoic, but it becomes fibrillar. And uh, this is the position of the rotator cable. And uh, the rotator cable is in continuity uh, with the coracohumeral ligament here. So this is the cylindrical bundle of fibers I described before. No, please don't move. Uh, this is uh, now is hypoechoic, now it's look hyperechogenic, no? And then I go posteriorly, I see uh, the myotendinous junction. I understand that uh, the tendon is formed by a deep portion and a superficial portion. So this deep portion is the superior complex, uh, including the capsule, the cable, uh, the coracohumeral ligament. And uh, uh, the fibers of the uh, supraspinatus, together with uh, uh, the other structure I mentioned before, continues posteriorly, 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 and they pass on the undersurface of uh, the tendon of the infraspinatus. So this is the tendon of the infraspinatus, and I see that uh, some fibers are transversely oriented here, no? Uh, so they don't belong to the infraspinatus. The infraspinatus tendon is located more superficially at this level. This is the po most posterior extension of uh, the supraspinatus, 
uh, more or less enriched in the capsule and the coracohumeral ligament. So we move to the, uh, to the slides. <coughs> Uh, when we go towards the insertion, another important uh, point, uh, remember that the, uh, if you wanted to dissect, uh, there is a nice paper published in 2007 on Journal of Shoulder and Herbal Surgery. Uh, uh, they say that uh, the supraspinatus and infraspinatus can be easily separated uh, uh, up to 14 to 26 millimeter from the most lateral point of their insertion. So this means that uh, more distally, approaching the uh, uh, greater tuberosity, the structure be becomes uh, 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 um, uh, um, merge it with each other and it's difficult to separate them without uh, creating a rupture at the level of the capsule. Uh, 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 but when you look at the su superior aspect of the uh, greater tuberosity, this is the footprint of the insertion of the supraspinatus, infraspinatus and teres minor. And remember that uh, this is uh, the, the red line visible here indicates the attachment of the capsule. We forgot that. So this is a lesser tuberosity. There is some bar bare bone at the level of the, uh, humor, uh, of the humeral sulcus, but not much. So um, it's interesting that uh, some authors recently published a paper in 2019 about a pattern of different pattern of tendon retraction in full thickness rotator cuff tears for which uh, there, there was uh, some uh, delamination no, of, uh, uh, of the tendon structure. And in some cases, uh, this, is what, uh, this is what you can see. So the delamination and retraction of the deep part of the supraspinatus, probably reflecting the avulsion of the superior complex, uh, whereas the, 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 the superficial part of the two tendons converging towards the insertion remain uh, uh, um, uh, unaffected. So and th there is also some discussion, you know, about which uh, perhaps the articular sided rotator cuff tears uh, represent a damage of the superior complex rather than a pure rotator cuff tendon tear. So basically when we have the uh, articular sided tears, uh, uh, there is a capsular involvement first, then also tendon involvement. But uh, 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 remember uh, that we have a capsular layer here as well, not just at the level of the uh, subscapularis. In terms of uh, 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 um, uh, characterization of the superior complex, uh, uh, remember that uh, the amount of uh, tendon fibers uh, changes depending on the location. It will be maximal anteriorly, and then the, the fibers of the tendon diverge going posteriorly to merge with the infraspinatus, but they will be less and less going posteriorly. And so at the end, the superior complex will become uh, thinner and thinner, no? and probably at the end, we'll have just capsule, no more supraspinatus. No? When we scan deep to the infraspinatus, we continue to see these fibers. Uh, the, uh, of course, uh, there may be some fibers coming from the supraspinatus, but they may extend posteriorly uh, 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 up to one centimeter, not more posteriorly than one centimeter uh, 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 from the tendon position. And so, when we place the probe in the long axis of the infraspinatus, this is the uh, posterior glenoid, this is the tendon, look at this video clip, what is that? Is the tendon? No, it's the capsule. Again. And this capsule form the deep layer of the infraspinatus in this case, an image that is more similar to the one of the subscapularis. So uh, just to show, <coughs> so when we go to scan the, the external rotators, uh, this is the the long axis image of the tendon of the infraspinatus 
but we have to reduce the magnification a bit to increase the gain. In the deep part, I need to see uh, the uh, posterior labrum. And then when we uh, rotate the arm internally and externally, we see a kind of tissue, a hyperechogenic layer located here. And this layer doesn't belong to the infraspinatus. It reflects the capsule and is in continuity with the, la uh, with the image of the labrum. Then you see uh, now it's uh, uh, very um, redundant here. No more fibrillar. It, it becomes uh, more echogenic in internal rotation, but is a separate structure uh, compared to the uh, uh, um, uh, tendon of the infraspinatus. Remember, when you wanted to have a good image of the infraspinatus, this is uh, not written in the in the guidelines. No, this is a, is a very nice position of the arm, because you place the probe here, and you are in a perfect uh, um, alignment. Uh, at the, uh, uh, over the uh, infraspinatus tendon. So this is the long axis image of the infraspinatus. I feel that uh, this position is much more productive to image the infraspinatus. Again, what is that? Is the capsule. And what is the, 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 the deep layer visible here? Probably uh, is the capsule, and the, the capsule will merge with the fibers closer to uh, the insertion. This is the insertion uh, of the tendon and uh, even posteriorly, you can see uh, two definite layers of fibers. So, <coughs> this is what happens. The sup uh, supraspinatus, the infraspinatus, they converge, but uh, they remain sep separate structures proximally. And at the end, uh, the two tendons were displaced by the anatomist. You see the joint capsule distally. So the insertion is distal, and probably the f uh, in, a, in a distal position is impossible to, dis to dissect the two tendons from the capsule. But anyway, ultrasound is able to see some differences. And when you scan the, remember, when you scan the uh, infraspinatum using the Middleton position, the Middleton position is not adequate for the infraspinatum. But when you go post towards posteriorly uh, and you move to, uh, at the level of the infraspinatus tendon, you should rotate the probe like this, you know, to be in the axis of the infraspinatus. In this case, you can demonstrate the tendon of the infraspinatus and you can separate this tendon from the uh, superior complex. Okay, so fishes again. Now we are in the aquarium of uh, ECR 2019 again. Thank you very much for your attention.